Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about Shifting the demand and supply curve for currencies. In this video here we're going to look at factors that can shift the uh, demand and supply for exchange rates and we'll look at this through a graph over on the right hand side. So initially the four factors that we're going to look at include changes in relative interest rates between two countries, differences in relative inflation rates between two countries, differences in their growth rates or GDP or income, and differences in the relative investment levels. So in this case here, we're going to start off with interest rates and we'll say this is factor number one. We will look at our first diagram over here on the right hand side and the example we're going to look at is the interest rate drops in the domestic region. So what's the domestic region and what's the foreign region we're looking at. In our case here the domestic region will be the euro area and they will have a currency called the euro and the foreign area will be called the US and we will look at the dollar in that case. Now in our diagram, the equilibrium has been reached between demand and supply for the quantity of euros out in the market. And this has give us, given us an equilibrium of one euro gives us one dollar. So an exchange rate of one to one, and that is at point A. Now, with an interest rate drop in the domestic region, what happens is the follows. If the interest rate drops, well then there will be less likelihood for investment and for money to come into the domestic region because interest rates are low relative to other countries. So investors would be more likely to bring their money over to the US for example with relatively higher interest rates. So in the euro area you will tend to see an increase in the supply of euros so we'll indicate that with a rightward shift, rightward shift of the supply of euros because euro area residents are exchanging their euros for other currencies, in our case the US currency. They are getting rid of their euros and they're buying up and demanding dollars in this case here. So they're investing less in the euro area, hence they need less uh, euros. Also, the demand is going to drop for euros. So not only are they exchanging them for dollars, they're supplying more onto the international currency markets. Also, people are demanding less euros. So if they're demanding less euros, that is a leftward shift of the demand curve for euros. And the leftward shift there will bring down our exchange rate down here to point B. And at point B, what we see is a definite depreciation of the euro. So now our one euro can get us an awful lot less in the way of dollars. So let's say 0.7 or 70 cents. So now one euro gets us 70 cents in terms of dollars. And there are more euros in our case here, just because of the way I've drawn it. There are more euros out in the market. And let's say that is 120. The key point here is after the interest rate drop in the domestic region, we have a depreciation of the domestic area's currency, a depreciation of the euro here. Okay, so in example two then, what we're going to see is the difference in relative inflation rates. And what we will have here is, in example two, we have inflation increasing in the domestic currency, in domestic region, which is the euro area. So if inflation increases in the domestic region, in the euro area, what this tends to mean is the euro area becomes less competitive and this has an impact on exports. So if inflation increases in the domestic currency, our exports become more expensive. And what we tend to see there is that the demand for euro decreases because 
the US consumer is buying less European exports. And if they're buying less of our exports, European exports, they will be demanding less of the euro currency to buy them. In which case the demand curve shifts to the left. At the same time, we may be buying more of their goods, in which case the supply of euros increases. So the supply shifts to the right and the demand is shifting to the left because of the change in competitiveness and because our exports are more expensive. In this case here, we have point number B, which shows us that the exchange rate, the euro exchange rate, has decreased or depreciated so that one euro now is giving us, we'll use the same figure as before, 0.7 or 70 cent. So one euro gains us 70 cent dollars, which means there is a depreciation of the euro currency following an increase in the inflation rate in the euro area. Okay, so number three then, we will look at relative growth rates between the euro area and the US. And in this case here, we are looking at GDP or income increasing in the domestic region in the euro area. Now, if GDP increases in the euro area, what will tend to happen is when income increases, so too generally does the amount of imports that we buy, so the propensity to import. And in this case, if the income is increasing in the euro area, people will be buying as a part of their general goods, more imported goods. What will happen here is if you're buying more imported goods, you will be supplying your currency out onto the international exchange market. You will be getting rid of your euro and exchanging them for another currency such as the US dollar. So you are buying more imported goods. To do that, you need, for example, dollars. So you're supplying more euros out onto the market so that you can demand more of your own currency. Now, uh, in this case here, what will happen is the demand for euro will decrease because you don't need that to purchase those imports. So demand decreases for imports. And in this case here, what we have is a depreciation of the currency, just like we've seen before, so that our one euro gives us, let's say again, 0 0.7 or 70 cent in terms of dollars. So this is caused by an increase in the supply of euro because you want to exchange this, for example, for dollars and you don't need, uh, or there's not as much demand for euros now because people aren't buying as many European made goods, in which case the demand curve shifts to the left. So a depreciation in this case. And then finally, we will look at the example of differences in relative investment. So point number four, and the example we're gonna take is where the investment prospects decrease in the domestic region, so in the Euro area. For some reason, investment prospects are decreasing, maybe because businesses are not as confident and they're not growing as strongly or consumers are not which means that investment is dropping in the euro area, the impact of this is twofold. So one, because investment prospects have decreased, this means that there's going to be less demand for the European currency, and there is less demand for the European currency. It shifts uh, to the left, because if you're not investing in the area, you don't need to demand euros because you're not going to be uh, investing your money in that country, which means you don't need euros. So the demand curve shifts back to the left as demand for Euro euros drop because of diminished investment prospects. And at the same time, Europeans will be investing less in Europe so they will be supplying euros out onto the market 
So supplying them and exchanging them for other currencies such as the US dollar. So they will be supplying more or shifting the supply curve to the right because they're going to exchange them for dollars. And at the same time, there's less investors from outside of Europe demanding euros because they don't want to invest in this region. So their demand drops and our supply of euros increases. In this case, the equilibrium decreases to point B and the currency depreciates so that one euro is now giving us, for example, 0.7 or 70 cent in terms of dollars. So when investment prospects decrease in the domestic region, this leads to a depreciation of the domestic currency. Okay, so that's a summary of five different ways in which changes to macroeconomic variables can depreciate the currency in the domestic region. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.